ever wake up in the morning Dalton and just know it's going to be a good day that's how I felt today on the home opener for the Central Penn Knights women's basketball team here at East Penn High School Paul Miller Dalton Kohler here with you for the nightly news media club and I'm so honored to be here with you Dalton to kick off another season of Knights basketball uh, me, me as well Paul I'm very happy to be here I'm so excited for this season to be here. so one of the things that uh, we're trying to, to do this year is we're trying to do some little things to spice up the broadcast. Well, one of the things was you talked to Stacia King before the game. Tell us a little bit more about that conversation. Yes, I did. I talked to Coach King before the game, and the three main keys she had to, to beating Penn State York was, one, 
passing the ball around, making sure it's at, you know adequately getting to all the players. I feel like the offense flows a lot more with that. Second thing is being able to adjust to the defensive changes that Penn State York makes, whether it be man or zone, whatever uh, whatever changes they make, make sure they adjust to that. And the biggest thing she said was getting defensive stops. The more stops they get, the more times they get the ball, time of possession, better chance of winning this game. Well, the Knights have gotten off to a heck of a start, including a 3-0 and mark on the season and a victory in the Penn State Scranton women's basketball tip-off tournament. And there we see a quick steal by Amos. So this is going to be a fast-paced game. But Penn State York also comes into this contest 2-0. Yoder with the shot doesn't go. Penn State York has blown out their opponents to say conservatively 78-43 and 65-28. This is going to be a tough contest on both sides and a very aggressive flash with the rebound. Got to watch out for number one, Anani Robinson. On the early season, Dalton averaging 23 and a half points a game. Oh, she's been absolutely dominant to start. Absolutely dominant. And Coach Hing did mention before the game that getting an eye, the ball, just running the ball to her, making sure she also plays solid defense too to back it up. And she's a really key player for the night tonight. Shutter inside. And that's the one you gotta watch right there. If you remember our uh, broadcast from last season, Desi Garcia Hernandez, uh, the senior. Keep an eye on 23. That's rebound there by Robinson. Robinson gets the quick double team and Amos is wide open for three. Can't get it to go, but Green the rebound. Yoder is another one to watch. We got some size down low with Yoder. Already two field goals. Hasn't quite connected on either, but Yoder's going to be a key piece for this team this year. And you saw right there, Robinson, when she took the ball, she took it to the top of the key and she drew the defenders in. Had a wide open look for the three, just couldn't connect. Shutter out of bounds on the turnover. Can't quite connect with Fink. Number 20 for York. Now, I will say, as of right now, although we're very early into this game, right now, Penn State York shutting down the Knights offense. They're running a very solid 3-2 uh, zone, and they are just really limited to anything, any open looks right now for the Knights. So 0-0 zero, zero here early on. Yoder had the shot there to pass on it. Nearly turned it over, but Green comes up with it. And the shot, 4-3. I think she's going to run for two. Foster the rebound. Gosh, it's just like we never left. Nope. <laughs> Turn over there, Robinson with the steal, pushing it, tries to go to Yoder, but picked off, going back the other way, and Garcia Hernandez on the fast break is going to take the foul from Flash. I honestly think Robinson might have been better off there actually putting up the shot. I mean, she had an open lane, and she decided to try to dump it off to Yoder real quick, and it got deflected, well, turned you know, turnover. There only have been three games this year, and, and you know we were even talking about this before. We do have three returning players to the team this year. Or, excuse me, four returning players from Sydney Green, City Bub, Kayla Thomas, and Brandy Swinton. But it still is a, a pretty new team that has to come together, and this is their first home game, so maybe a little nervous. Yes, it is. But also, I did um, have a conversation with Sydney Bub a couple weeks ago, and she did say that the gelling process has been very easy. It almost seems like some of these girls, even though they're just incoming, it seems like they've been here for a while. Again, we got to keep an eye on Garcia Hernandez tonight. She is the key player for York to watch out. Got a lot of returners here, too. So if you look back at last year, Garcia Hernandez led the team in points with 14.6. There she is, taking it the other way, coast to coast, after the steal, and Desi is putting on the show. Last couple of minutes, she's taken over and needed to put a stop to her. Foster also averaged 10.4 last season. Jayla Brown, 14.3. So they're returning off three of those scores. This is, as I mentioned, not going to be an easy game. That's the second travel on Anaya Robinson early on here in the first quarter. I do remember last year, uh, a lot of the times we were doing the Lady Knights, they got they, they start slow. Yes, very slow. They do start out very sloppy, but once they start to get in the groove, once they start, you know, play cleaner basketball, that's when we usually see a lot of Good things on the offensive side. And they're going to get a push off on, on uh, Garcia Hernandez, which is a good thing. I mean, if that's one way we can get her off the floor, she gets into foul trouble. Looks like they're going to call it the other way.
they were calling Garcia Hernandez on the push off, but apparently not the case. Yeah. Am I blind? That looked like I, a push off to you, right? That looked like a push off to me. So I don't, I'm not sure what the call was. Making sure that I'm not seeing it. Yeah, now we're having a conversation. I'm not sure what exactly they're talking about. I think they were trying to check in on the shot clock. Yes. Okay, back at it. Of course, flash on Desi. Then they get the screen. That was a very, very solid screen by Jillian Foster there. And if it weren't for the foul, Desi would have had another wide open look. Had another wide open layup. Now we are pretty deep on our bench. Now Penn State York does have five suited up, as do we. Looks like Brady Swinton in street clothes tonight, so it doesn't look like Swinton playing. Yeah, that she has, was dealing with an injury. That is very true, but that is a big loss. That is another very, very you know, important key big body down in the court. Fifth, the sophomore, the foster, the junior, underneath them, the Knights are already looking at a 6-0 deficit. Been a tough, they can't really find much. They've had some shots. They just haven't fallen. There's Amos for three, can't go. Very nice and rebound And rebound back to Amos. Herbert with the big rebound, that's Yoder. Yoder's gonna need to do a lot of that this year because just like last year, we're a smaller team, don't have a lot of uh, players on the front lines playing, especially with Swinton out. Very much so, and if we can find a way to, even though with the smaller size, if we can find a way to win the rebound battle, that'll be absolutely massive for this team. It doesn't really look like Penn State York's got a lot of size either. Outside of, outside of Jillian Foster, even Desi Hernandez has some decent size here as well. Nice shot in shot. Herbert now with the bucket. It's 6 4. See, this is what I was mentioning. Playing a little bit cleaner now. Now we're getting on a roll. Hernandez did average 5.8 assists and 7.5 and rebounds again last year. Nice rebound so Hernandez can really play it all fast for the game. I mean, what do you even say there? They're calling cheap fouls on, on us, and then you can't yeah. get a foul call there? I don't know about that. That definitely seemed a little bit... It definitely seemed like there was a foul there to be called. Hey, that's one way to slow the momentum down. That's yeah, for, for sure. sure. Do you believe in momentum as an athlete? A hundred. It pays a huge fact, especially in a game, especially in a fast-paced fast game like basketball. Anytime you can get on a roll, I mean, you can see even the NBA where teams will be out blowing people out. All of a sudden, 11-0 run puts them right back in the game. What a sequence. First of all, we see Nike News Player of the Year from two years ago, Sidney Bubba, enter the game. And a nice fast break and one by Brielle Herbert. Yep, not afraid of the contact there. Just went straight to the rim, laid it in for the nice and one layup. See if she can get the second one. Herbert comes from Lackawanna College as a transfer. And the Knights take a 7-6 lead, a 7-0-1 after getting off to a 6-0 deficit to start off the contest. Just like that, momentum. Love that they're bringing Bub in off the bench. Kayla Thomas also will be uh, coming off the bench this evening, and she's a, a dynamic player as well. Oh, very much so. It's really interesting. I mean, I've been doing these games for at least the last six years, and this is as deep of a team as I ever recall the Knights having. Oh, very much. I 100% agree with that statement. Foster. The travel. And our turnover. And just like that, not only when you build momentum, not only does it get you getting in the flow, feel like you're just getting points almost every single possession, but it also makes them sort of play on their heels. So when mistakes like that happen, it just magnifies even more. Bob almost threw it away, but inside to Amos. No call. Comes up empty. Going the other way, Brown to Shutter, the double team. Great defense by the Knights. Couldn't come up with the steal. Yeah, that was very good there. They just double teamed her right there and make sure that, you know, couldn't get an open look for a shot. Unfortunately, York keeps the ball, but still a very good defensive stop. Garcia Hernandez to inbound. Garcia Hernandez from Spain. Foster, the turnaround jumper, can't get it to go. Robinson comes up with a rebound. But there's a, I think they're gonna call a foul going back to York.
looking to see, I mean, we've definitely had a lot of drives to the rim early, but looking to see, there hasn't really one outside shot. No, they have And the Knights have attempted a couple, they've actually set up a couple really nice threes, but they just haven't been able to connect on any here. This is who we need to get going right there, Sydney Green. And that's gonna, where's it gonna go? Kamaya Goodley. Well, they haven't made a call yet. I agree, I agree. Okay, they're going to get York with the foul on Sheila Brown. And I think Goodley had Cindy Green open there for the three in the corner, but she was just trying to draw a foul there, and she actually got it to work. And Goodley has it again back to Green. Green puts it on the floor back to Goodley, and they're going to get a travel. That's so unfortunate because that play was beautiful ball movement and Sydney Butt was going to be wide open for the three. And we all know how prolific of a three-point shooter she is. Aaron Henry in the game, the biology major. That sounds like a lot of fun. No, I bet. We need people doing biology, yeah. though. Yes, we do. Can't have everyone calling basketball. No, unfortunately not. <laughs> we'll leave that to us. Leave that to us. Blaster over to Brown from deep, can't get it to go. Robinson another rebound. So Robinson, as the point guard, is averaging seven rebounds a game this year. You can see why. From downtown, that can't go. And a big reason why she's, you know, rebounding so much is because she's not afraid to get in there and get the ball and not afraid of contact, which is absolutely huge. Big Green, her first basket on the home season thus far. Let's see what Aaron Henry has. This is from Adamstown. Do you know where Adamstown is? I am not familiar with Adamstown. I am not going to lie. I do recognize the Calico High School. Though. Did you ever play them? I did not. But they were in our conference, I think, at one point. So they can't be too far from them. No, they're not. Nice with a very solid zone defense right there. They're going to call a timeout. Well, that was a pretty incredible. We went almost six and a half minutes with no stoppage of play. Like well, that. just to let everybody know, uh, Central Penn College fans rest easy knowing the experts at Select Physical Therapy are on the sidelines ready to help you and your team in times of need. With convenient locations nearby, getting back in the action is close to home. Go to selectphysicaltherapy.com to find a location near you and start your journey, journey to recovery today. Go Knights. So, uh, I mean, an interesting start to this game here. I am surprised that none of the even short jumpers have fallen, pretty much everything at the basket or at the foul line. But I got to say, the Knights have played some tenacious defense, even after getting off to a basically 0-6 to, to start this game. Oh, yeah, very much so. And that's absolutely huge because, I mean, when you get down big deficit like that. You weren't just trying any way you can to get back on the scoreboard. The fact that they've not only got on the scoreboard, but then have gone on a nice little run here, that's absolutely huge. But it's not to say, I know you mentioned the, the jump shots. It's not to say that they're not setting them up well. They're getting nice open well. They're getting nice open looks. They're just not making them in yet. Once they start making those jump shots, this offense is going to be pulling away here. Three minutes, 30 seconds left in the first of four 10-minute quarters. It's like a clock issue. Well, now that we have a moment uh, to talk, next Tuesday, we'll have a double header. Lady Knights will kick off against Penn State Lehigh Valley at 6 o'clock. After that game's over, the men's game will be on after that. That will be an unbelievable night. So not only the doubleheader, but the men's home opener. Can't wait to call it here with you guys. Here can I. Robinson can't get it to go. Has a pocket pick. Also, McAlexander there, number four, checking for Penn State. Foster from downtown. No. There's another rebound for Robinson. And they're going to get the foul called there on Bernard. There you go again. That's another one of the key parts is winning that rebound battle. And so far, I would say the Knights are handily winning that battle. 
I know that you've had some epic battles with Penn State York over the years on the baseball diamonds. Yes, Definitely yeah. one of those teams that you always uh, circle on the calendar. As 100%. Like one 100%. of the rivals, I would say. Yes, they definitely are one of our rivals. They always play us. They always play us very, very. I hard. remember probably one of the best games I've ever seen in Central Penn. It was against York. The last season. Yeah. Okay, Penn State regains control of the ball. It is nine to six with two fifty-three left here in the first quarter for the home opener here for Central Penn Knights here at East Penn High School. Paul Miller and Delton Kohler here with you. York here just moving the ball around the perimeter trying to get something open. And there's, put, that's gonna be a backcourt. And a turnover. And that right there, they would have had another open look for a nice three-pointer there for Brown, but just an errant pass leads to a back, leads to a backcourt violation. Ashlyn Lee, 24, checked in from Mondorsville. And they're going inside to Yoder. Yoder's not going to have that size advantage against Lowe, though. There's no question about that. Oh, that's 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 that was a beautiful top step there by Robinson to get inside for the easy layup. Well, he made it look easy. That was not a tough layup. You know, Dalton, something I just noticed. And I Robinson averaging 23.5 points a game in only 15 minutes. So a lot of rotation going on from head coach Stacia King here, trying to get everybody time here early on in the season. Yeah, I think a big key to that too is making sure, again, not only getting them reps for later in the year, just in case someone unfortunately goes down with an injury or something along those lines, but also it's just keeping the players fresh, keeping them in the game, making sure they're up and moving and making sure they're getting going. I would also point out that uh, we've won, let's say, say we've won all of these games by more than 35 points, so yeah. that also probably contributed yes, to I think part so. of that. I mean, there's no reason to change it and no. it's working. Exactly. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. This is an interesting lineup here for the Knights in terms of up front. You got Green and Bub up front with Yoder, and they're playing that 2 3 zone down low. They're not going to get much down low. No, they're not. Robinson on the low post. Nice. What a pass. That was a beautiful play. And Herbert gets the call. And the Knights are going to pull away now with a five point lead, and Herbert's a chance to close out another three point play. And I think a key point to why that play ran so smoothly was them pulling in uh, Ashlyn Lowe there to double team Allison Yoder, and it left Herbert wide open for that wide open lane. Lowe is the tallest. Um, I think that's going to be difficult to defend because Yoder not quite the same size. Nice shot. Nice drive to the hoop. Herbert is going to get the foul call there. Yeah, she just tried to take the charge there, but unfortunately she did not get the ball. Round of the line. As we look back at last season for Jayla Brown, 14.3, just behind Desi Garcia Hernandez, 14.6. With that second one to go. Tough call for York. Looked like it did go off of Herbert, but we'll take the call. Yes, we will. And the 14-9 lead with 146 left. As we see Amos check back in for Herbert. Yeah, hopefully we start to get Amos going because she had a couple wide open looks for three-point line. Maybe you can get her going. That's you know, even more points if you can get another plan going. Another way to score for this nice offense. If they're going to give us these shots, why not? Yoder, what a shot! But triple team, I mean, at least you call and go to the line, but man, that was, they're not going to get anything down low no, if Penn State not. keeps playing that defense. They are just absolutely enveloping whoever drives to the rim. Is it to challenge them to shoot from outside because they don't think they can make it? I, I still, that just plays a factor. Also, just the fact that when you get hands in the face, obviously it's harder to make a shot. So just basically just get a hand up, get a hand in the face, put pressure on, make them make mistakes. 15-9, Kyoto make it 16. 
Absolutely. Yoder, it's great to have her on the team. She's from Elliotsburg and went to West Perry High School, the freshman center. Leaves it off. Will steal. Amos coming the other way. Has Bob as an outlet kick. What a shot. Very nice floater shot there by Amos. He had Bob for three, but heck, if you're going to make that kind of floater, take yep. it. Yep. 18-9 nights, just over a minute. They're going to get green for a hand check. Some of these calls tonight have been questionable at best. Going both ways. Yeah, but you always have calls like that. Just find a way to fight through it. Because those calls are going to happen. Now, obviously, if it's later in the game and we're trying to, you know, close game, we don't want those calls to happen. But rather those calls happen now than a more important time of the game. Brown has actually been the one that's been really impressive tonight. Number 10 for Penn State. Uh, we haven't really seen much of Desi Garcia Hernandez. Hasn't really done anything since the first six points of the game. No, and I think it seems like the offense is kind of running through Brown now at this point. Bump for three. A little too much, but we get the rebound coming back the other way. Robinson almost gives it up. It's going to be tough trying to go inside against Lowe. McGillan up, up to Brown. And they're going to get Brown for a travel. There we go. That's three traveling calls against Penn State York tonight. Yeah, and it just seems like every single time Penn State York starts to develop a little bit of momentum on the offensive side, they have a costly mistake like that that just loses it right back. The Knights lead by seven with 30 seconds left. And I think the Knights are trying to adjust here, trying to keep some players out on the wing. This is where I would bring in some shooters, personally. I definitely would, I agree. Shot that from her. Yep, did Amos. Didn't get it to go. And there's a steal except the kick ball. And we keep saying the nice trying to run this play where the ball handler takes the ball at the top of the key and dumps it down to Yoder, down in the corner here, and then tries setting up something in the middle. But that right there was good defense by the Penn State York defense not to allow that. Robinson, the ball fake. Nearly had a pick, but Penn State, or excuse me, the Knights lead game control. Eight seconds left. Amos takes the ball. Five seconds left. We have to get something on him. Bubbles to put it up. Good to pick the ball. Leave it on. Yes, the referee says that did not count. That was an ill-advised. Uh, Pass anyway. Bub came up with the ball, should have shot it, saw the open uh, teammate. That's the way it goes if you don't pull the trigger. Yeah, I think so. I think she just saw the defender that was near her. She was afraid to put up that shot. It just would have been nice if that shot counted, but you know, just a little bit too late. Boy, that was a tough one. That yes. could have went either way. No, yes, it definitely could have. <laughs> oh my. How about that? Heck of a way to end the first quarter. Oh, for sure. Don't forget, the CPC Health Center is open every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 11 a.m. until 5 p.m. in Super Suite 127. And the best thing, no appointment is needed. You stop by any time the health center is operating. They can evaluate and assess minor illnesses and even provide free basic health care products and referrals to off-site specialists and providers. Well, I got to tell you, that was a pretty incredible first quarter of play here to kick off the night season. I think that uh, if these are the types of games that we're looking forward to this this season, this is going to be a heck of a night's basketball calendar. Yes, very excited for the way this team develops and just keeps on getting better and better every single time they come out. Just, very excited for this team. Just want to give you a quick update in terms of some upcoming games. So we'll be here with you tonight. We'll also be here with you next Tuesday, November 21st. And then the Sunday after Thanksgiving for a doubleheader at noon and 2 p.m. against Berkeley before coming back here on December 1st, Friday night for the ladies against Bryant and Stratton. Another doubleheader that night, too. So we've got a lot of action coming up here over the next couple of weeks. Oh, for sure. I can't wait. Of course, you can always tune in to 
where you're watching us. The Nightly News Media Club of Central Penn College YouTube channel will be here with you about 10 minutes before every game. You can always go to centralpennknights.com for more information in terms of game times, locations, and of course, if you're in the area, the games are free. Come out. We'd love you to be here. Not a whole lot of rotation from York. Really, it's Foster, it's Garcia Hernandez, and it's Brown, and Foster gets that one to go. And that right there is not something you want to see coming out right open up the second quarter with a bucket. Not something you want to see. Good to see Kayla Thomas on the floor. I got to see her get going. Green did have a basket in the first. Oh! And Cromarty turns it over. This is Cromarty's first action. I think she was going to try to attempt to cross out to the left there and try to get a drive up to the up to the rim, but unfortunately lost the ball handling there. And the drive there. Hard to tell who that is because I don't have a number three on my roster sheet for Penn State York. So Rook number th number Rook three. Shutter. Okay, yes. Yeah. So I was looking at uh, the wrong one. Very good. I actually called Brooks' name earlier. Hey, this is their home opener. This is our first time over here, too. So we got to dust the rock off as well. One thing I will tell you, and, and we'll probably check in quite a bit with this. We do this in baseball a lot. You can always go to centralpennights.com for live stats. So any stats that you would like to have, you can check out centralpennights.com. Go to women's basketball and click on tonight's game. You can keep up with the scoring and everything else live from your computer or cell phone. Desi with the rebound. Up ahead to Shutter. And there's Foster again. And now we're starting to see the momentum is switching. Now it seems like York is in control of the game. 18-16, Knights only with a two-point lead. That's six for Foster. They're going to get a travel on City Green. For the Knights, Herbert leads with eight. Yoder with four. Ashanti Amos two, but one for six from the field. Five rebounds for Robinson. That's Kaya Kamasta, number five for Penn State York. The freshman in business from Lebanon, Pennsylvania. You ever get down to Lebanon? Yes, I have. We've also played, when I played baseball for my high school, we played the Lebanon teams a good bit. It's a very nice town. Lots of baloney. Yes. I love Lebanon baloney. There's a lot of people that's a very contentious issue. A lot of people don't like Lebanon bologna. I, for one, love it. I do. I have had it. I tried it. I heard about it. I heard about I. You know what? I buy into the hype. It's very good. Seltzers. I'm sure there's some people out there that are cursing me on that, too. But I will always be a Seltzers <laughs> blue Lebanon bologna fan. Not sure what the holdup is here. We're talking about bologna over here. <laughs> Knights lead by two with 8.48 left before halftime. So glad we could be here with you, Paul Miller and Dalton Kohler. For the Nightly News Media Club, of course, we'll be here for all of your home games in this season. And you can, again, always go to centralpennknights.com to keep up with where we're going to be and come out to a couple of games this year. It's great to be here in sport. The Knights. Hernandez for three. And that it. That was a tough shot over a... Caller Allison Yoder, very good shot there. Falling away to us. Got it. And the drive for Bub. And gets a little rebound. Huge play there by Bub because Penn State Rock came back and took the lead. That was a huge sequence. Yeah, so that right there, what I mentioned with momentum. Anytime you can just, when you're starting to fall behind, anytime you can get points on the board is absolutely massive. Looks like that was an ugly spill. Uh, definitely a, a trip, inadvertent. Yeah. But a trip nonetheless. Robinson's going to come back in. For Herbert. 
And I think that's going to be key because we need that key scorer back on the floor. Jayla Brown's had a heck of a game here. Does make that, but was only 62% from the line last year. Julian Foster at 61%. Desi at 67%. But she makes both of them, and Brown leads the team scoring for Penn State York. And they take back a lead 21 20. Another big possession here, and Thomas can't quite come up with the three. And what a steal by Bob! Regardless of if that was out of bounds or not, they had somebody wide open under the basket. Yes, it was they a did. Huge play. That was impressive. This is what. This is part of the reason why Sydney Bubb won the Nightly News Player of the Year. Yeah. Because of plays like that. Yes, her awareness on the court is unmatched. Foster fakes the shot inside to Desi. Behind the back. What a play. That could have went to Sports Center. That was a very, very well run play there by Pat St. York. Robinson's going to pull it back and pull up for three. Can't quite get it to go. And Thomas, the rebound blocked. You're gonna, your best to pull it back there. Yes, I think so. I'm interested to see Thomas and Robinson on the floor at the same time here. Two point guards. Of course, this is the first home game without Timmy and Jackson, and we miss her very dearly. And Thomas for three. Nice shot there from Thomas. Again, we're going to talk about momentum. That's twice now that York has taken the lead and has not been able to hold on to it. No. And then Jayla Brown. That was going in, and another lucky break. Yeah. I mean, it's rare you see that happen. In any time anyone plays basketball, let alone in a collegiate game. So, nice will take that break for sure. 100%. I will say we've been on the lucky side of not only a couple of breaks, but a couple of questionable calls. Yeah. Like you said earlier, the pendulum can't always go in the other direction. Very impressed with Yoder. I've only even seen her come off the floor like once. I mean, and without Swinton, I, I think, you know, Coach King probably told Yoder she's going to be yeah. playing a lot of minutes tonight against this tall, taller team. They've yeah. got a lot more size, height than we do, at least from the players who've been in the game. Yeah. Yoder, great pick up there on the loose ball. And they're going to get Kayla Thomas with the travel. That's the fifth traveling call in this game. So yeah, already, I've, it's kind of rare to see this many travels going on. Just not really clean play here from either side. A lot of travel. So hopefully the Knights can clean that up. And Garcia Hernandez gets throws an errant pass. There's another errant pass that somehow Penn State was able to hang on to. Could have had two steals right there. Hopefully that doesn't bite uh, the Knights in the rear. For a senior, both of those passes were ill advised. Yes, very much so. Now Desi takes on the entire team and gets the foul call. It's not going to be a shooting foul. No, we're not. They are in the bonus, probably after that call. Six oh seven left in the second. Twenty three twenty one Knights lead. But I knew this was going to be a tight game, man. It's, both of these teams came in here and have basically steamrolled through their opponents to this point in the season. So we knew this one was going to be tough. Leave a wide open shot out. Ties the game at 23. Yeah, not to be disrespectful for either team's opponents, but right now, for both teams, this is definitely their best opponent up to this point. I would say without a doubt. Inside the court, Marty! Very, very nice ball movement there by the Knights to get that layup. Very impressed by Yoder. There's a heck of a pass and there's shutter wide open again. Oh! You see her, seen her hit that shot two times in a row. You gotta stop. You can't leave her open on that shot because right now she's got the hot hand. She's gonna hit it. Can we get Queen going? Only one basket tonight. Not a lot of movement here from the Knights. 
Green pulls up. Can't quite get that to go, but Cromartie the rebound. Nice. Very nice play there by Cromartie. Impressed with this crowd here tonight, Dalton. Very much for so. opening night. I will say, since the opening night, we usually get a bigger crowd, but usually later in the year it starts to die down, but this is easily a much more rumpus crowd than we're used to seeing here. Garcia Hernandez draws a somewhat questionable foul, but I know she'll take it. Knights lead by one, but Hernandez will go to the line. Amos checks in. Robinson checks out. Robinson didn't want to come off the floor right there. I do not blame her. Jazzy makes the first. Woo! Lead with just under five minutes left to go here in the second quarter. They've definitely changed it up a little bit in terms of the offense they're running. They're, they're basically running all outside the three points. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's just because they're they're wary of Penn State York loading the box, loading the perimeter, and they're just making, they're just trying to, you know, get something going on the off si offensive side on the three-point line because they really have. That's really not been a factor for them tonight. And Thomas from downtown, no good. And out there, and Yoder comes up with a great save there by Yoder. Knights go back the other way, and Green takes it to the hoop. Can't get it to go. Amos comes up with it. Can't get that one to go either. Hernan Garcia Hernandez finally comes up with the rebound. What a shot there from Kayla Thomas, the junior from Baltimore. Yeah, the reverse basket. The Knights need to control the pace of this game right now. Right now, it's running all through York. York is 100% controlling the pace right now. Knights need to get that back. Yoder puts one up, doesn't get it to go, but is fouled. It just seems like York's defense is putting the Knights' offense, on, keeping them on their toes, making them try to, you know, just put anything up. And that's why we've seen the last couple of shots, we've seen a couple, you know, errant shots, not good decisions with the ball. Nice offense. Looking to hopefully clean this up here. They were up 6 nothing at the beginning of the game, but they pulled ahead there by three. Back-to-back, -back. excellent possessions there for the Knights as they lead 31-30 with 3.43 left here in a second. And as I mentioned, that was just because, like I mentioned, Penn State York was kind of, you know, taking over the, the pace of the game. They were you know, keeping the Knights' offense on their toes, and they were starting to run a lot of plays on the offensive side, and they got a lot of wide-open looks. So maybe the Knights' defense has to make a you know switch maybe change a game plan here for uh, York offense to try and snuff them out and Penn State York takes the ball this is Jayla Thomas not to be confused with our Kayla Thomas that's definitely a travel Gutter inadvertently picked up both feet. Another, another, you know, mental mistake there by York. Knights need to capitalize on this. 3.30 left. Amos brings it up. 
to Green. Very impressive Yoder's ball skills. It's an excellent addition to the team. Thomas tries the floater. I think Thomas would have been better off fishing out to the corner to a wide open Amos for a three. Nobody went with Brown. And Brown gets the hoop and the bucket. Excuse me, the hoop and the foul. Yeah, the Knights defense there, that zone defense left a wide open lane for Brown to just drive the rack and have an easy wide open layup. Just miscommunication there from the Knights. This has been a pretty quick game. Very few stoppages in play. All the games are usually about an hour 45. Woo! We're pretty safely at that pace at this yeah. point. There's only been one timeout that I recall. Yeah. That was that one by Penn State just a minute yep. ago. Thomas shoots again, can't get it to go. She's been firing, that's for sure. She's definitely putting up shots. I'm not saying she isn't, she's just unfortunately not making it. Did hit the three earlier, but that's about it. Wide open Thomas again. Excuse me, Brown. The Knights have got to do something about that. Yeah. I think they're too busy worried about, you know, Foster and Hernandez, but they're leaving Brown wide open. What a rebound there by Green, but can't get it to go. And now you've got a wide open player. Number 20, Michaela Fink. And I think this is time for a timeout. Thirty-seven, thirty-one, two twenty left. Knights have to do something here. The Central Penn College app was designed with students in mind. The app brings the school to your fingertips and enables you to connect with Central Penn community. Stay on top of your events, classes, and assignments with the built-in calendar function, and get notified of important dates, deadlines, and security announcements. Make friends, ask questions, and access campus resources at any time. Search Central Penn College in the App Store. Well, definitely not the 7-0 run that uh, the Knights were hoping would, would go against them. Just all, uh, some miscommunication. Brown has just been wide open. Somebody has got to get a body on Brown. 100%. They just need to play a little bit cleaner basketball. They're not very crisp right now. Gonna get the call there on the trip. That's the second on Garcia Hernandez. Not in a whole lot of foul trouble at this point is York. You can definitely see though not having Swinton in the lineup. Yeah, that plays a big factor. It and does, and Yoder's played game. great. I take nothing away from Yoder. From downtown, another advised shot there from Herbert. And the thing is, now that you're down by six, you feel like you have to, you oftentimes have to feel like you have to make a three to get back into it. But whatever offense they were running with four, when they were just dominating, you know, dominating on the offensive side, time of possession, they need to get back to that because that was working great. I will say Penn State York's defense has made a very nice adjustment. McAlexander checks in for Desi. Brown back to the line. And he does miss that one. Woo! Makes the second, makes it 38 31 with 210 left. Knights trail by seven. Biggest lead of the night for York. Knights definitely need to get something going here in these last few minutes and try to make this a little bit closer going into halftime. Green pull up jumper, can't get it to go. Big rebound there. Rio Herbert. I think a large majority of the points of the Knights today have been off the rebound. Which is the irony is they were definitely a shorter team overall than they, but we have been dominating the glass. Yeah. There's Brown again for three. Foster. He's looking for Foster throws it away. The coach for Penn State York wants a tip ball, but I think he might be seeing things. Yeah, not quite sure what he's looking at there. That was very, very clearly just an errant pass for Foster. She saw it as soon as she threw it. Yeah. 
from Marty gets the ball here for the night. And a college shooter, Ravel. Number seven, I've been counting. I don't think I've ever seen this many travels from either a men's or women's game covering these games in the two, a little over two years that I've been calling these games. I know there was a game last year, and I'm pretty sure you were there. There must have been 15. I mean, he's, yeah, yeah, he actually, I do, I do recall that game. Well, that was an isolated incident. Trying to go inside, great steal. Bub comes up with it. Double dribble on Bub. That's a tough call coming off the steal. Going the other way. That, I didn't see that personally, but I did not. But that call might be costly for the Knights. Nice. Literally, they were starting to get something going on offense and have that coming back their way, getting the ball back in the back in New York's hands. It's not great. From downtown, that's McAlexander, no good. Pushing the ball to Green, can't come up with it. Somehow gets out of it. Back to Green for the shot taken to go. She has been told they're gonna get Robinson for the over the back. And they would have had Green earlier on that play, but she just lost the handle of the ball on the pass. That would have been another easy layup, but just, again, not playing Chris basketball. And that's definitely a factor for this Knights offense right now. Knights trail by five, just under a minute, 54.4 seconds on the clock. And McAlexander to the line. From Northeastern High School in New York. Shot number two. Can't quite get that one to go. It's a six point deficit. Knights need the score here. Maybe try to go for the two for one. Inside to Amos. An extra pass to Green. And that's the play they were trying to run that last possession. That time, no fumbling of the pass. Very nice play there by the Knights. Wasn't a charge there from Boston. Oh, it looked like that to me. What, what did I say about uh, the calls earlier? That's a that's a tough play there. Jail down again. You know what they say? Hand down, man down. Amos gave Brown too much space there to get those three. Green to pull up. Jumper can't get that one to go. And about five seconds left. They're going to go up to McAlexander. That will do it for the first half. Certainly not the way you want to end it. Well, the Knights are trailing 42 to 37 going into the halftime. And gosh, that escalated quickly. Yeah. For, so, a, for a moment there, it looked like the Knights were pulling away. And they've almost seemingly let your come back in this game. Not only come back in this game, but they've also taken the lead as well. So it looks like the score is 44-37. Excuse me, 44-35, a nine-point deficit here for the Knights. We'll have a 15-minute break. Dalton and I will come back with a couple of minutes before the next half and talk keys to the game. Until then, we're going to take a break, and we will see you on the other side of halftime.
All right, Paul Miller, Dalton Kohler back here with you. We're going to get you ready to kick off the second half. Dalton, oh my gosh, what a competitive game. And then what happened the last two minutes? It's now 44-35, Knights trail by nine. Yeah, I mean, going back to what I said before the game about the three keys to the game, first one I talked about was, you know, the Knights' ball movement. And I would say, at times, the ball movement has looked very solid on the perimeter and the interior, stuff like that, but it just seems like costly mistakes with dropping the ball, losing the ball handle, that just led to the Knights' inefficiency on the offensive side. Another one was adjusting to the defensive adjustments from Penn State York, and once they switched from the zone to the man, it seems like Knights haven't really been able to get anything going on the offensive side. And the last one, getting defensive stops, Obviously, by the fact they're down nine, they really have not been able to get many defensive stops. My, my sort of read on the first half was we played great in all facets of the game. We had a lot of great steals, played well on the boards, made the close shots really cold from outside. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, Kayla Thomas only had one three-pointer in the first half for the entire team. And a lot of the open jump shots we just were not making. Do give a lot of credit to Yoder, has come in really, really strong for a first time being here and has played well against some taller competition. Also, it's uh, an excellent passing, too. Of course, Sidney Green's been playing fantastic. Sidney Bub had a couple of great moments. But just the end of that quarter is just what the, the Knights cannot fall into because they're just not a quick strike coming, at least from what we've been seeing. No, they're not. If they can start to, you know, get some momentum back on their side and get something going more consistently on the offensive side, we'll be having a chance to get back and win this game. 15 seconds to kick it off. Started here, going to take a quick look over at centralpennights.com. Just remember, you can always head over to centralpennights.com to check out. If you go to the women's basketball page, click on the live stats for the game on the schedule. Brielle Herbert leads the way with 10 points, five rebounds. Yoder with eight and three. City Green with four and three. But on the other side, Jayla Brown leads the way with 14 points. Desi Garcia Hernandez, nine and three. And I think I think a key for the Knights to getting back in this game is just getting someone on Jayla Brown. She's been absolutely killing us to end that, that first half. They just need to put pressure on her. And there you go. She takes the first shot. They have three people on her. Jesse gonna get. They're gonna call a block. There's another push off. It looked like. I'm sorry. Like that is not a block. When you straight elbow somebody. Yeah. No. I, that is that not. was a. I try to keep my opinions to a minimum, Dalton, but that was a poor call uh, no, in my I, opinion. You, you have to mention it. That is definitely not a great call. That's like a receiver pushing off and getting defensive pass interference. Yeah, yeah. And Desi does the same thing with a little shoulder block. Keeps it to go. Please leave on my buff. Up to green. I like how they're moving the ball. Same... Herbert stepped on the line. Head coach Stacia King, not happy with whatever the call is that they're trying to make. I will say this is now, I believe the third or fourth women's coach I've seen since we've been doing this. And they all have a very different approach. Very much so. Was Chris Norcus here the first year you guys were here? I don't know. I think it was. I think it was still the coach that we had last. Okay. Somehow the Knights get the ball. I guess she did not step on the line. Really tough pass there, but Green comes up with it. Inside. 
An ill-advised shot, but gets it to go anyway. Brielle Herbert leading the way for the night. I mean, even though it wasn't the smartest shot, the fact that it went in, hopefully they'll start to get something going here. We'll take it. Foster. Inside to Desi. What a shot. High off the glass. Yeah. Again, do you go to man at some point? I think you need to. Just to, just, you know, stop them. And just get people on them, get hands in their face, try and get a, try and get a stop. Beautiful shot there by Bub, the floater, makes it 46-39. And again, Brown right to the basket. <laughs> You're, you're not gonna win this game no, defending them like that. No, you gotta you gotta get someone on her to stop her. She's ha she's having too many wide open drives to the rim. Bub tries to take it in over Foster, can't get it to go. And now you're leaving Desi wide open the other way. What a hook shot! That was impressive. I mean, it started out. I mean, York's starting to pull away, and it's because they're winning the rebound battle. That's a big. Big key factor. Huge shot there, and Yoder the rebound. No call there. Green. And they're going to get the foul call on Green. Wow, that was an odd sequence. Very odd sequence, but luckily it ended up in the Knights' favor. Amos in for Bub. Haven't seen much Kamaya Goodley since the first half, even the first quarter. Green gets it to go. Shrinks the lead to only 10 for York now. After such a close first half, to be down 10 here is a little demoralizing. No, for sure, without a doubt. Green can't get that to go. That's going to be York ball. Knights trail by 10. And you know, you wonder too, well, you know, the Knights won the big slam tip off on it. That was huge. But this is the first team that's really even playing them. No. Yeah. A again, Brown for three. Back to what you were saying, Dalton. They're not in Brown open. No, they just, they, they continue to somehow she finds a way to get open. Herbert almost has her head taken off there. No, but yeah, like you mentioned, this is the first team that's really, you know, given them a tough game, given them a tough battle, and not saying the Knights aren't performing, they're, even though they're down 10, they're still, I would say, they're keeping themselves in the game, they just need to play, I think they're just playing a little bit too much on their toes, they need to play, you know, cleaner defense, not, you know, try and be perfect, just play the style of basketball that's been working for them. Frankly, I don't think offensively is really the issue, personally, I think it's some it's defensively, I, I, although, you know, not getting those types of shots to fall also really hurt. Yeah. Brown, almost as a pocket pick to Foster, to Garcia Hernandez. Those are the veterans here on the York team. And you know, Garcia Hernandez to give and go. And, it's a bucket. and I think a big key right now for York being able to pull away in this game is they've been finding a way to exploit the night zone defense. They're just getting so many open looks, whether it's Brown, Hernandez, Foster, you name it. They're getting so many open looks and they're finding ways to exploit this night defense. So maybe making some type of adjustment will help the Knights start to get more defensive stops here. Michaela Fink makes the free throw. Now the Penn State York leads by 13, 53-40. And we've got Kamaya Goodley back in the game after I just brought that up. Green to Yoder. Goodley for three. Yoder almost comes with the rebound. Goodley inside to Cromarty. Can we get it to go? No. We're going to get it over the back. They say they're not calling that. It's just going to be Penn State York ball. I think another thing that's kind of been a hindrance for the Knights is miscommunication. There's a lot of, you know, not talking and people being in the wrong spots are not supposed to be has led to 
defensive inefficiency for nice. Amos takes it all away, but cannot get it to go. I mean, shots like that, you can't afford to miss those. When you're down 13, if you have a wide open look like that, you have to miss it. And Desi from the wing to Foster to Brown. And Brown takes it all the way. This is a career night, even though with that miss for Brown. A very solid defense, though, by Green. And does he the steal, the ball fake, and the Brown wide open. I mean, that right there, although she was wide open, that was just because the steal. Defense couldn't get back in time. It was basically a two-on-one, wide open look. And they're going to get... They're going to get a shutter for the foul. 55 to 14. It's been all Penn State York since about halfway through the second quarter. Yeah, and right now I will say York has adjusted very well to the Knights' defensive scheme. It seems like the Knights, to open up this half, even though they have scored nine points, which isn't bad, it's not enough to, you know, keep pace with how, you know, well the offense is running from Penn State York. And a good double dribble, Robinson! Robinson not happy about that one. Definitely not the start they wanted here, though. No, for sure not. Checks in. Four times they work. Brown. Back to Brown. What a defensive play there by the Knights. We're trying to run a give and go there, but nice defense by the Knights to stop snuff that one out. And they get that one to drop goodly. And Foster wide open. I mean, you see there, just that sequence. Knights with a fast break and open look couldn't make it. York, fast break, open look, made it. Yoder comes up empty, and Garcia Hernandez. Goes to the line to extend this to 19. Yeah, and I think that was really Robinson's only play there was to foul it. Well, definitely not what we were expecting here after that tight first half. Uh, the Penn State York's really extending it. Central Penn College is now partnering with Handshape, our new career management platform, to help students and alumni discover new career paths and find amazing jobs and internships. We understand students can be easy, but we've pre-populated some basic information on your profile for you. Simply click on the Handshake tile on mycentralpenn.edu or download the Handshake app to your phone for quick access. Alumni and employers, contact Career Services Central, centralpenn.edu to find out how you can join us for free on Handshake. And if you ever need any questions about things like resumes or LinkedIn or Handshake for that matter, you can always reach out to my main man, Steve Hassinger. Steve actually gets to call some games with us in the springtime. Do you get to listen to any Steve calling uh, the baseball game? Yes, I have. A fair couple of times where I've, you know, gone back and looked at our games, you know, look at game film or see something. But yes, I do like his... He has very good commentary. Does a very good job. I mean, I, I I love everyone who I get to commentate with. I don't have a favorite, but Steve does a great job. And actually, you know, last year was the first time he'd ever called a game in his life. I would have never guessed this. <laughs> I would have never guessed that. He does a really great job. Well, he watches a lot of baseball. Yeah, I and mean, that that'll do it. What an incredible World Series. Really, the whole playoffs. I mean, again, I know that you're a Philly fan. I'm not bringing that up. I mean, it was an incredible... The, the games leading up to the NLCS, the, the emotion and the Philadelphia crowd is just like... How do, how do teams win in I, 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 I never get it. I mean, and the fact that throughout the playoffs, most of the times, like, other opposing teams are trying to make comments to, like, try and quiet down the fans, and it only made them louder. It's just so funny. Still a heck of a run. I know that they didn't win it, but you gotta be. You can't be too upset. No, I'm. De I was upset for a while, but now, now looking at it and looking at the moves we're probably gonna be trying to make, I'm very optimistic for next year. And hey, Otani's a free agent. I don't know if we're gonna get him, but man, if he was in that lineup, that would be absolutely. That would break baseball for sure. <laughs> Back to basketball. 
It's uh, we just finished the baseball. I'm sure we can wait a couple of months. No, for sure. Ooh, Robinson, the shot gonna get the, to go to the line. It's 57 40. Knights trail by 17 and frankly need to get on a run right now if they want to have any hope of being competitive in this contest. No, I think so. Garcia Hernandez is coming off. I don't recall if Brown has left the floor tonight. No, I don't think she has. And I think that's, you know, even though she's start, you know, you would think she's starting to get tired out, she's not playing like it. She's been full throttle, been an absolute offensive and also kind of defensive force tonight for Penn State York. And I guess, again, looking back at Brown's last season stats, 14.3 points per game. I think the thing that did Jayla Brown in only 27% from the field last year. Yeah, that is not, I whether it's men's or women's collegiate professional, what level, that is not, that is not ideal. She's definitely improved that this year, that's for sure. Oh uh, yeah, definitely looking like it tonight. Robinson thought it went off of McAlexander, but the ref did not agree. Desi will inbound to low. So even with some rotation here, still two of Penn State York's best players are on the floor. Low can't get that one to go. Good rebound there for Central Penn. Amos wide open. Oh man, they needed that. They definitely did. And that's another, you know, factor as to why the Knights ha have really not been scoring too many points here in the second half. They've had open looks. They're getting good ball movement. They're getting open looks. It's not like they're throwing up Aaron shots like they kind of were in the second quarter. They're just not making it. One three-pointer tonight, too, though. Yeah, that's obviously not good at all. Another shot from Brown. No call on the charge. It's 59-42 with 3.25 left here in the third quarter. Knights need to do something here if they want to keep this a contest. Not the way we envisioned the home opener going, though. Definitely not. Green goes to the shot trick with the fall, and Desi is wide open. Can't connect, though. And there's going back the other way with Nick Alexander and Garcia Hernandez on the break. Tiptoes the baseline. McAlexander, no go. And Yoder with the rebound. Almost for three again, no go. And McAlexander open. And that's the thing that I'm noticing here with the Knights offense. I've mentioned several times how York has really adjusted the Knights concept on defense and they're scoring a lot of points now getting a lot of wide open looks the Knights are just not exploiting the York defense right now they're playing a lot of people in the paint they're leaving a lot of stuff open on the perimeter and honestly right now they can afford to not put that many people on defense on the perimeter because the Knights are not hitting their three-point shots that's three also three consecutive times they shot three miss three miss three miss you that's not how you run an offense no, when you're down by 19 points. It's not. I appreciate getting open looks, but they weren't really even open looks. No, they weren't. You need to get you need to get some summits of points. It doesn't all have to be three pointers. I know when you're down a lot, you want as many points, but no, you just need to get points on the board. Start to build some momentum. Start to build a game plan and get yourself back in this game. Dalton, even with the convincing wins, the first three games, Knights only shooting 25 percent from behind the arc. I'm curious if that's something we're going to have to keep an eye on throughout this season, if they can get some three-point shots to fall. It definitely is. And if they can have, you know, even just an improvement to even maybe get it to 27 from three-point. Just some sum of some improvement where right now it seems like most of their offense, not most of their offense, almost all of their offense is mid-range and, and, you know, under the rim. So right now, all the defenses do is just load the box for the defenders. They can't make their threes, they're not going to win. So they need to be able to have that, you know, dynamic type of offense where they can attack you both from the inside and the perimeter. Here's, when you look back at the game, Ashanti Amos, 
one for ten. Kayla Thomas, one for seven. And even City Green, two for ten. In this game, you're not going to win shooting like that, especially when Jalen Brown, six out of 14, and Desi, four or nine. Amos almost came up with a steal, but Garcia Hernandez, the shot. Low the rebound. Comes back to Garcia Hernandez for the bucket. Also, one thing I'm noticing here is the York offense is also getting starting to get a lot more offensive rebounds than they were in the first half. And that's another key factor because anytime you keep the ball down in your court by getting rebounds, you're gonna get more points automatically. Robinson misses the open shot. Thomas comes up with the steal. Robinson takes it all away. Sticks with it. And it's 63, 46. What can the Knights do here? They're going to get Robinson to the foul. Six one minute here to go in the third quarter. Hey, you get two. We get two. Let's go. And to the line, Aaron Henry. Sydney Bobby's also checked into the game. That's another. Again, if you're not shooting too well from the three point line, that's one of the people you want coming in. But with her goes Yoder. Is Sydney going to be playing the one against Lowe? What a rebound there by Thomas. And trying to go through too many lanes there, and you're coming right back to make Alexander. I think the Knights are just trying to. They're trying to find the perfect play and the perfect pass and everything like that. You don't have to do that. I know you're down a lot. You feel like you need to, you know, play perfect. You don't. Just get points on the board. Green does so. But we still trail by 17 with 35 seconds left here. And it's with Alexander from downtown. And we're going to get Robinson again, who's been in serious foul trouble tonight. Just... As good as Alexander, or excuse me, Robinson has played 23 and a half points in the game coming into this game, she has struggled tonight. Yes, definitely. And that right there, you saw York drive to the rim and pretty much almost every single person on the Knights defense crashed to come down to come get her. And they left someone wide open for a three-pointer. Now, luckily it didn't fall, but York still got the ball back. Offensive rebound leads to a foul, and now it's going to lead to more points for, for Pesce York. Taylor Thomas is going to jump ball there. Going Penn State ball there. Okay, nice ball. Can the Knights close it to within 15 here? And Cromarty to Bob from downtown. Cromarty the rebound, can't get it to go, and low pulls it down and Desi Garcia Hernandez. Bob fouls with Alexander. And that's like the third or fourth time that Desi has snuck out and essentially been wide open for no. a break. Yeah, I mean, now granted the defense, I'm not expecting them to be able to get back there in time. Again, Hernandez there, wide open, has a fast break, two on one. They're either going to make the open layup or you're going to have to foul them to make sure they don't make that. I mean, that's all, that's all that can happen for Penn State, uh, Penn State there. To me, I think playing a not even an attempted shot, um, I, I'm surprised to say the least that they haven't gone to some type of man defense on between Brown and Garcia, Hernandez and even Foster. They're just not able, they're, they're getting way too many wide open looks yeah. is Penn State York. It just seems like they're not making any adjustments. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure they are, it just seems like they're not because 
York is just adjusting to everything they are doing. It's hard to study when you're hungry. The College Pantry can help. Central Penn College and your Student Government Association are committed to ensuring that all of our CPC Knights have access to food when they need it. Requests are kept anonymous and can be submitted online. Look for the link under the link section of Student Central or contact Lindsay Garber, the Director of Housing and Residence Life at lindsaygarber at centralpen.edu. You can also request in the Central Penn app that we mentioned earlier today. It's dire at this point. Knights trail by 19 after, frankly, a back and forth first half that was, you know, putting this in potential for game of the year. Unfortunately, the run that uh, Penn State York has been on seems to be insurmountable at this point. Yeah, and I will say, you know, you still think you still have to think, be positive that, you know, making a couple of shots and getting a couple of stops in a row, going on a run, will get you back in this game, because it will, but it just seems like York has, com they completely dominated the Knights that entire third quarter. Even though, yes, the Knights did get some points, they dominated. So, if you can somehow find a way to, again, I know we keep mentioning momentum, but it's playing a factor right now, and it seems like York has all the momentum. So if you can find a way to even get some of it back on your side and start to build on that, hopefully we can have late come back here for the Knights we walk out of here with a win. Even if they can make it competitive, that's got to be good for the spirits of the team. No, for sure. Who traveled to Clark Summit this Saturday before we're back here next Tuesday night. So you don't want to go into the weekend game thinking that you, know, you didn't play your best. No, you definitely don't. The master number five. You got Foster Green with the, almost the steal. Still a nice stop there by Green. Brown and what likely is a career game at this point. Of course, she is a senior, so I don't want to. She probably had some huge games. Even if it's not a career game, it's still a great game yes. for Brown. Okay, a turnover there. And what a shot there by Herbert that couldn't go. Again, just it's that's basically what the Knights have done almost every single possession of the second half. Yeah, I know. It just seems one like, shot and it's over. Exactly. They're not We were saying how Coach Kings were the key to the game was ball handling. In the first half, I would say they did a very good job with it. This half, I would say not at all. They are just seemingly way too fast based on the offensive side seemingly just driving down and taking the first open shot they find and then they don't make it okay bub to herbert trying to get it down low another ill-advised shot another and say your rebound and bub knocks it out of bounds and again, that was another, I think there might have been two passes on that last possession from Central Penn. One thing we're seeing here with Penn State York, and the reason why they've been able to keep the Penn, uh, Central Penn defense at bay, is because their ball, their ball movement, they're passing the ball very well, although that was a turnover right there. So it made me eat my words there for a second. But they've been passing the ball, getting it around, and developing, starting plays, getting wide open looks for their offense. 67-48, Penn State York moves by 19 with 8.53. Left here in the fourth. Paul Miller and Dalton Kohler here for the Nightly News Media Club. Of course, we will be here with you every home game. Club can't quite come up with it. Can they be a jump ball? That'll go back to York. Or not. Looks like Thomas will inbound it. We basically get to do it again. Hopefully we get cleaner ball handling here. And they're gonna be green with a travel. So much for that. And now Green's flexing her shoulder. That was a very odd. Exchange. That very well, very much so. 
I'm not quite sure what happened. She just got the rebound and almost just seemingly crumbled to the crown. Ooh. Herbert with the near steal. Runs into a pit from Brown. And Brown drives to the hoop. It's the foul call. Sydney Green. Sydney Green. Sydney Green. Round to the line to shoot two. And when you have someone on a team that is on a roll as much as Brown is right here, it at times can seem insurmountable to stop them. It seems like all you, all you really can do is try to send them to the line to try to cool them down. But Brown's been shooting very well from the line tonight as well. So whether she's you know getting open looks and getting layups or going to the line, she's still getting points. It's only 21 point deficit. Trying to get it inside to Yoder on the double team in the green. Another good shot that just wasn't close. Look at Yoder. Thomas can't get it to fall. Yoder is really giving her all here tonight. We'll say she's one of the very bright spots for the night tonight. I'll say the team, especially defensively, I don't think has played poorly. There were definitely a few times that that, you know, Brown was getting some open looks, but they've caused a lot of turnover. I think the problem here is the second half, they've just gone ice cold. Yes. I mean, they legitimately can, seemingly cannot get anything going on the offensive side. And there's another bucket. That was a tough turnaround shot there by Foster, but again, they're red hot. <laughs> They all got hot hands. Not even counting the first half, the second half, Dalton, but before that shot, Penston Brook has been on a 25 to 12 run. It is 71 to 50. Can the Knights bridge this gap at all? The shooter, Garcia Hernandez, has her pocket test. Going back the other way. Bob was open for three, but passed it inside to bring in a trouble. No! Bob had the open look. I mean, seemingly looked like you were going to get something going. Not momentum though, but you were going to have a play there. And oh my god, wide open is coming in. 73 to 50. And Green takes it to and calls the timeout with her team trailing like. I mean, pretty much the whole York team was yelling at her to pass it to a wide open Hernandez. They, she just caught the Knights defense sleeping. I'm not sure what happened on there. That was a complete defensive breakdown there. Central Penn's year-round accelerated schedule composed of four 11-week terms enables full-time students to earn a bachelor's degree in only three years. Fast track your success with our accelerated terms. Also, did you know that Central Penn College doesn't charge any type of fee for applying? It's absolutely free. Go to our website at centralpenn.edu to apply. 7.06 left. The Knights trail 73 to 50. They're definitely not outmatched. They can just tell they're just not playing as well as they can. No, for sure. I mean, I will say they, they do have a, a size advantage, but skill-wise, I would say we're right up there with Penn State York. It's just, they're hot, we're cold. That's, That's sort of a microcosm of how this game has gone, right? They're loading the box, they're trying to get inside, and we just we can't penetrate their defense, so instead, we're trying to... It's almost like they knew what we were going to do. Yes. And that we haven't been able to adjust. Again, only 1-3, and that's really kind of the way you get around this kind of defense is, is your outside shot. Yeah. I mean, they are just seemingly reading us like a ball. Another turnover, though. So we're trying to keep it close. It's 73-50. Six minutes, 30 seconds. Quarter. 
Herbert has had a decent game. Thomas can't get it to go. What an effort there by Green. And the ball a jump ball there. What an effort by Green. Yeah, and I will say that play, that possession there by the Knights, even though it didn't up in points, was a lot better than the possessions they had there. A lot better ball movement there, and they got a wide open look at three, just again, couldn't hit the shot. Definitely give the Knights credit for not giving up. No, I mean, they, sure. they, they are definitely still playing in this game. Oh, definitely. Nice hustle play there by Green. Green is, has really been hustling tonight on multiple occasions. Again, just sometimes it, it, the shots just don't go your way. I mean, it's not yeah. going to be like this every night for the Knights. It's, of course, tough to have this kind of showing in front of your home crowd on, on the home opener night. But Dalton, at the end of the day, if they don't win this game, they're still 3-1. And the steal from Herbert. Definitely still a lot of potential for this night's team. Definitely still a lot of potential. Let's take a look at the schedule coming up. Like I said, we have Clark Summit. That'll be on the road. And then, of course, we'll be back here next Tuesday night with a doubleheader. And uh, we will be here the Sunday after Thanksgiving. That will actually be Tyler and Brian calling that game. I'm going to be the producer of that contest. So if you don't like my commentary, well, tune in that day because I won't be on. Of course, then we'll be back here for another doubleheader on Friday, December 1st. So but you can always check out centralpennights.com for all the info, details, and of course, come to a game. It's free. Love Brian and Tyler. Even, great commentators, even better people. We actually just got to go to Tyler's wedding. It was really fantastic. If you ever had to wait months for a dentist appointment, you know there's an extreme shortage of dentists and dental staff in Central Pennsylvania. Central Penn College is stepping up to fill that hole by offering programs in dental assisting and administrative dental assisting. The courses are developed in conjunction with Dr. Michael Verber and the Verber Dental Group, so you will get some of the most up-to-date and finest hands-on training in the region. By successfully completing 18 credits over three terms, you can earn a certificate as an administrative dental assistant or a dental assistant in as little as nine months. Learn more at centralpenn.edu. And uh, I've actually got to meet some of our dental students in some of the first cohorts at the college. I didn't realize until I was on the podcast with Dr. Gerber the massive dental shortage area. I didn't either. And inside to Herbert. Looks like they're going to get a foul. And a nice trail by 21. 73-52. And even though they're still down by this much, it does seem like these last couple possessions, Knights offense is starting to mount some better plays, mount some better efforts on the offensive side. And again, it might be a little too little too late. It's still promising for the upcoming games. Did it coincide with the timeout? Do you think that there was adjustment made during that timeout? I think so. I think there was a much needed adjustment that was made. Well, the Knights keep it to within 20 with 5.45 left. Now they have Green playing press man on Brown. I wonder if that should have happened a little earlier, but... And no, Yoder touches the ball and it's going to stay with York. And it's the little things like that. And unfortunately, it's... You can't really say it's a bad play. I mean, it is, but it's just... The little costly things like that have just added up for this Knights team. It's one of the... One of the reasons, there's a lot of reasons why they're down, and that's one of the big reasons, just costly mistakes like that at costly time. New York will inbound. Right to Garcia Hernandez from long range. Can't quite get it to go. Going back the other way with Thomas. Thinks better and pulls it back. Club comes up with it. And now they're pressing the other way. And the Knights turn it over again. So the York went to, to play press defense, which up 20 is a, a bold move. But it seemed to work. So at this point, it looks just like they're, they're trying some different things to see what works. Foster to Brown. And at this point, when you're down so much, it's really all you can do. Foster. What a backdoor cut. 
Shutter can't get it to go. That was a heck of a play. And you've got two, three people open on the wing. That's exactly the shot they had last time that they couldn't get it around. Again, speaking to your ball movement discussion that you talked about earlier. Yeah, I mean, Wow. Tough call on Bob. But yeah, as I mentioned, I mean, it's not to say that they haven't been getting open looks. They are. It's just, unfortunately, tonight is just not the shooting night that the Knights would have hoped for. Bob and Green come out. Cromarty and Amos come in. <laughs> On the bright side, that's why they play many games in a season. It doesn't all come down to one game. And again, Dalton, you know, it's it's difficult to do this job in that, you know, we know these people and, and this, we're invested in this game. But at the end of the day, we knew this was going to be a tough game coming in. This is their first big test in the season, and you can't help but learn from a game like this. All the way for Desi. Very impressive. I think the one thing that they have to learn is even though, yes, they – came back and they took the lead and actually at one point took a commanding lead. You, I think another thing is like getting off to that slow start that got off in six months. I mean, just in that fact, when they got off to that slow start, it showed York what they can do on the offensive side to get points and what they can't do on the offensive side to get points. 75 75-53. Thomas can bring it back to within 20. You know, I'm curious as well. And again, Coach King, this is the first game we've ever called, so I, I can't really say. But I'm curious to see how the starting lineup might evolve because to your point, you know, that slow start, is it because of this starting lineup and do certain players play better with others? And I think that's one of the things that you're starting to learn from your first handful of games in the season. Yeah, I think so. And I think at one point, now granted, they're both both incredible players in their own respect, but when you had Kayla Thomas and Anai Robinson on the same floor, two point guards, that was seemingly... If I can recall, that was almost seemingly like when the Knights' offensive flow was starting to slow down. I, so you, what you're saying is you don't think both of them on the floor is a good thing? I mean, in terms of getting quick points, I would say yes. But right now, when you have both, you know, when you have Kayla Thomas only making one three and you had a nine having an off night, it's not going to work. There we go. A, a bright spot. That's Kayla Thomas' second three-pointer, and we're within 18. 323 left. I guess stranger things have happened. I mean, I Reggie Miller have. scored seven points in five seconds. I mean, it is possible. Yeah, Tracy McGrady scored 13 in almost 30. So, yes, stranger things have happened. Well, just in case we end quickly with you, just remember we'll be back here next Tuesday night on the Nightly News YouTube channel on the Steel from the Elder. The final look at the Central Penn Knights live stats. Rio Herbert with 17 on the night. Yoder now with 10 and 7 rebounds. Sydney Green with 7 and 7 rebounds as well. Going to Penn State York, of course. The leading scorer, Jayla Brown with 22. Garcia Hernandez with 17. Jillian Foster with 10. Low the sky hook. Can't get it to go. Dan the Knights. Do something here. Yoder, the shot. Can't get it to go, but follows her shot. And you're going to get a jump ball there. Again, another impressive effort from Yoder. And I will say the Knights offense looks like they're playing much more sound basketball here. A lot less turnovers, a lot less fumbling the ball, less errant passes, less errant shots. Looks like they're actually starting to get something going here. Herbert from downtown can get it to go. Bob comes up empty on the rebound. Really definitely going to get her. Herbert, great attempt, but 
took one too many steps. And it is 75 59 with 213 left. Looks like this one might be getting close to getting out of hand for the Knights. But again, the Knights, even with the loss here, only going to fall to 3 and 1 on the season with three consecutive home games after this Saturday. Right through the legs. Didn't really can't come up with it, but it's going to remain Penn State York ball. And again, another thing I'm noticing on the defensive side and the offensive side, they're almost starting to lose that rebound battle now. Where in the first half, they were Knights were almost dominating it. Now it just seems like York is getting a large majority of the rebounds. Well, Robinson was rebounding earlier in the game, and the foul trouble that she got herself into did hurt. I mean, again, seven and a half rebounds coming into this as a point guard. Bob, another big rebound. I'll tell you what, this has been a tough, tough second half. Yeah. Definitely not how the Knights expected to come out in the second half and play. Just not ideal. Low trying to go glass, can't get it to go. Gets the wrong rebound. Dela Thomas checks in number one. Like Jesse could be done for the evening. And the rebound. I mean, the you just saw right there, one possession, I think two or three offensive rebounds for Penn State York. Kept them in there. Eventually, they're going to get the bucket. And going to switch up the lineup here. You know, the Knights, we, we want to congratulate them, at least in this respect, and it's that they played hard. They, they just, their shots just wouldn't fall to them. No. Give a lot of credit to Yoder. Very impressed with Yoder's effort. Yeah, and I will say, you will have nights like that when your shots won't fall, and it is tough to win games, but the fact that you can still show some toughness even late in this game with how much they were down that is that is really promising for this night nice well we're under a minute yeah, like I mentioned they're still showing hustle they're still they're still hustling for the ball they're showing heart they're showing that they're upset about this loss that is very promising for this night nice because they know it was a tough game they know it wasn't their best game but at the end of the day late in this game, they did what they could to just try and still keep it somewhat competitive. Well, now we're coming to the end of the game. Just want to announce the nightly news player of the game is going to be number 12, Brielle Herbert. We're coming in with 17 points, six rebounds, and three or four from the line. So congratulations to Brielle Hope, Herbert, the nightly news player of the game in her first home game. Now, as soon as this game is over, we're going to have a brief wrap-up, and then we're going to take a short break. We're actually going to hopefully, if everything works out well, have our Nightly News Player of the Game join us and ask about what happened tonight in this 77-59 contest. There is 20.5 seconds left. We're going to have a brief wrap-up, and then we will meet you on the court to have a conversation with, hopefully, Riel Herbert. <laughs> Definitely looking forward to coming back here Tuesday evening to see the next contest. Again, coming up, Penn State Lehigh Valley. That'll be at East Penn Middle School for a doubleheader. Inside to Yoder, the shot, and that goes. He was right up there for Nightly News Player of the Game as well. Yes, he definitely was. That's now 12 points for her. She's had a very, very solid game. Looks like this contest is going to end with a score of 77-61. And gosh, I'll tell you, after I saw the first half, I really thought that this was could have, you know, in competition for game of the year. But in the second half, Penn State York just dominated, and frankly, the Knights weren't able to come up with any answer for Desi Garcia Hernandez or Jayla Brown. No, I know. I mean, going into halftime, they were only down five. It was very much so a game. Yes, 
late in the second quarter, York did take control and they, you know, kind of took the game away from there. But it still seemed like it was in reach. And then they came out in the, sec the second half and they just completely stopped almost all their momentum and just couldn't get anything going. And like you mentioned, just completely dominated. But even still, late in the game, they showed some grit, they showed some toughness. And looking forward to the next matchup here for the Central 10 Knights. We are going to take a short break and meet you down on the court. So uh, for Dalton Kohler, I'm Paul Miller. Give us a break. Give us about 30 seconds and we're going to try to get the nightly news player of the game to join us here for a post-game interview. We'll be right back. Congratulations to Brio Herbert for winning the Nightly News Player of the Game. Unfortunately, the Knights did not come away with the victory, but we will be back here with you Tuesday night for a doubleheader, so tune back in. For Paul Miller, Dalton Kohler, Abby Bresky, and the rest of the Nightly News crew, we will see you again on Tuesday.